Hello YouTube, I uh, have a quick video here, not really a review, but just an overview if you'd like about uh, the recent pens coming out of China here. I've got a few of them. Um, uh, anyone who saw my Instagram post uh, earlier uh, knows that uh, I posted just a real quick comment um, it, saying that uh, the recent pens coming out of China are uh, either encouraging or disturbing depending on how you look at it. Um, encouraging because the quality is really going up on Chinese pens that are coming out of China. Uh, disturbing because they're getting better at it uh, really. Uh, some of the pens that are what some would say homage pens or copies, uh, pirated, whatever you want to call it. Um, some of them are a little bit more original, um, uh, but they still have some elements that are copied from other pens, uh, other well-known brands. Um, but here's a quick overview of my experience with them. Uh, first, I'm gonna bring the Wingsung uh, 698. And I've got two of them. Both of these are inked. And I got a demonstrator in a black version. Uh, some have, can see the resemblance to a uh, Taiwanese pen maker, Twisby. Uh, it does kind of remind me of the Twisby Echo, or Eco, sorry. Um, and, but they're really good pens. Um, I was very impressed with these. The, or am very impressed. The, uh, they have a nice idea. It's a piston filler, which is something you don't see too often uh, in the Chinese pen arena. Um, I like the fit and finish. Uh, I like the idea that the piston, you can lock this down so it doesn't twist on accident. Um, that's something that maybe Twisby should be looking into. Um, the nib and feed are, is something that looks very, very, uh, what's the word, uh, reminiscent or it's very Pilot 78G or Pilot, um, there are several pens that use this style of nib and, and feed, but it works and it worked right out of the box, which uh, that's not always the case with Chinese pens. And the colors are pleasing. Uh, the quality is pleasing. Uh, I've had these for, this one I've had for about a month, I think, I'm guessing. And I've had no issues with it. No hard starts. It, it just starts. It works. Um, so that's a good thing. Um, another recent I, well i don't know how recent they are to the pen market but they are recently introduced to the u.s um is going to be lingmo lorelei i don't know how you say that but it is a pen that's very good quality is it's a little bit controversial just because it uh looks a lot like a sailor pro color um I think they did a good job as far as uh, making a pen that works. Again, it has that pilot uh, feed and nib style. Not so much the nib, but the feed is def definitely looks like a pilot nib. Uh, pilot 78G is what I'm most familiar with. Um, and they did a good job with the converter. Um, it seals well. It writes well, no hard starts, um, things that a lot of Chinese pens were known for. I mean, when you bought a Chinese pen, I'm talking about my first Chinese pen I bought almost 10 years ago. Um, you bought a Chinese pen, you knew you were going to have to work on it in some way or another. The nib may have been scratchy or the feed needed to be reset or reseated. Um, sometimes they wouldn't suck up ink into the converter. Uh, you name it, there's all kinds of issues. And, and the quality was lacking, to, to be frank. And uh, a lot of people 
would recommend Chinese pens as gifts to to give to people who were not familiar with fountain pens. I kind of shy away from that just because why would you give someone a pen that is going to maybe not be so great in the quality department and you'll leave a bad impression. I mean, even if you work on the pen to make it right and everything, uh, there's still that quality um, quality issue that, well, how long is the pen going to last? And so I kind of refrain from giving out Chinese pens. I'll use them uh, for myself. Uh, and again, this is, I'm speaking about in the past. I, I used them in the past to practice my nib adjustments, nib grinding, uh, just general fountain pen maintenance. And uh, it helped a lot. But to give them out as gifts, I'm a little iffy on that. But now, with these pens like these, I, I really would not have a problem giving this pen as a gift. This, I mean, this is a full acrylic. It doesn't have the problems that uh, the Jin Hao um, 992 does. If you want to convert this Lorelei uh, or Lingmo Lorelei into an eyedropper, go right ahead. I mean, it's a solid piece of acrylic all the way through. The barrel is is nice. And, and this is acrylic that I have seen on custom pens. And go ahead, eyedropper. I drop our way in on this one. Just put a little, little bit of grease here, uh, silicone grease, maybe a, a rubber um, O-ring right on the end. And some of them, like the demonstrator, already have the O-ring. I'm not sure why they didn't put it on this acrylic version. Uh, the demonstrator version, I'd be a little hesitant on eye drop ring just because it has the same thing as the Jin Hao 992. There's a little piece here on the end that is uh, screwed in or um, I don't know what you want to call it. it I, I can't tell if it's screwed in or glued in, but I'd be iffy on eyedroppering this uh, just because the possibility of leakage. This one, no problems. And then we're going to the Jin Hao. I just got these Jin Hao 992s. Uh, looks very similar to the Lingmo, uh, which again, looks just like the Sailor Pro Color. Um, uh, the one thing that I think the Lingmo has up on the Jin Hao, they do feel a little bit better, uh, of a better construction. And I don't know if you can see that the, the um, converter has that little agitator in there and that helps uh, to break up surface tension in the ink so it keeps flowing so I don't have flow issues with this one this one is still too new for me to make a decision if it's gonna do uh, the same or if it's gonna have flow issues so far I haven't had any issues with it I'm not gonna eyedropper uh, convert this one um, currently I have I forgot what ink I've got in there um, I believe it was Robert Oster Fire and Ice. Um, I, I can't remember right now. I'd, I'd have to look at my notes. But uh, I'm just going to use the converter for now. And it has the converter that they've seemed to moved on to that Lamy style or Lamy style converter. And uh, I have that in a couple other pens. It seems okay, um, but I'm, I'm not calling it yet. Uh, then the, this is a more recent acquisition. Uh, it's Penton or SKB F20. Um, this one seems to be good. Uh, I really wouldn't eyedropper this one either. You've got a finial that's screwed in right here. You can kind of see, I don't know if you can catch that, but there's, uh, it's uh, threaded and it's actually really loose. See, I could just undo it here real quick. And so maybe you would have to seal that up if you wanted eyedropper, I'm not going to. I'm not gonna bother with that. Converter is fine for me. Um, I like the uh, transparent feed. The nib seems okay. This is actually a little bit wider than what 
that's typical of Asian pins. Uh, this is marked as a fine, I want to say. Yeah, as a fine. And it writes, I'd almost say a medium fine. Uh, very wet flowing. Um, a little bit of a hard start issue right when you first, I mean, you do your first word and that first letter is going to skip a little bit and then it go, it gets going, but not too bad of an issue. Uh, the clip is a little weird. It looks like the, it looks too short for the cap. Um, and then I don't know how this is going to fare up as far as maybe cracking right in this area. Uh, it looks a little thick, but, uh, if it, it looks like it could possibly crack the uh, Twisby style. And so that, that may be an issue, but only time will tell. Um, next one is going to be the D-like. Um, and I forgot what this one was called, a worn piece. I know it has another model number, but very similar to the Quaco Sport. Some people don't like that the brass is sealed and that it is... Uh, painted uh, to give it that aged look uh, you can just sand that off and let it uh, patina on its own um, this one I didn't have such a good experience with it it's okay but that nib is scratchy I've already smoothed out the nib um, but it does have flow issues even though this has the little spring in the converter uh, it does seem to dry out. Uh, the other issue, which it's not an issue now, but it may be in the future. You've got a plastic inner cap in there that has the uh, threads. So you've got brass mating to plastic uh, in their own instructions that came with this pen. It says don't over tighten it because you can basically... Uh, loosen the it seems like the cat the plastic inner cap is uh, glued in and it does when it first arrived it smelled it reeked heavily of like crazy glue so I think that plastic inner cap is just crazy glued in there uh, so that may be an issue in the future um, but I like the idea that you have a Coeco sport style pen uh, just slightly bigger, so but it accommodates a full uh, cartridge converter in there, which is a lot nicer than what you can get from Kaweco. Unless you eyedropper it, this you're not going to want to eyedropper this one, obviously, since it's brass. Um, but uh, just the fact that you have a full size uh, cartridge converter, I like that. Um, we'll see. I'm undecided on this one if it's really a, a keeper or not. And then the last one here is the SKB Triangle. Uh, oops. And that's why it's called the SKB Triangle. It's going to have that Lamy style converter in it, slip cap. Uh, there's a lot, of, a lot of different ideas going into this pen. I mean, you have an obvious almost 360 look. Um, you have a pilot style nib, pilot uh, varsity style nib. Um, you have a Lamy style converter, and this thing's really tight. Uh, the problem I have with this one is going to be it, it dries out fa fairly quickly. I mean, I have to really either saturate the feed to get, get it writing, uh, what I've actually resorted to, and you could probably tell because there's a little bit of ink in the cap here, in the little plastic inner cap. And uh, what I've done now is I just store it nib down. And that seems to keep the ink flowing just fine. And uh, But this, since I have to store it nib down, I probably won't take this out. It won't be an EDC uh, pen. The plastic feels a little bit cheap. Um just slightly above what say a platinum preppy feels like um, this this side of it feels a little bit thicker and more resilient this side as uh, feels cheap it feels really light the cap itself and you can tell 
I mean, just by the way it sounds when it hits a hard surface, that, that to me sounds like one drop and this thing is going to crack or shatter. So, um, so far, nothing like that happening, but I haven't dropped it. So, and I'm not planning to drop it. It's a nice design, nice idea, but it has its issues. So that's, that was a quick overview. Um, what I'm going to do next is just do some quick uh, writing samples here. I'm just going to set up for that.